So I'm here rebuilding the wheel for the bare metal bike because it's going to get a few um, a few tweaks maybe in this this episode. Um, and I tell you what, I hate doing dyno hubs. I mean, I like dyno hubs because. I'm going to start running them on the bikes to power those old lights, but I hate building wheels with them. They've got these little slots here on the small flange, which are pretty easy to just drop the spokes out of. If you just twist this a little bit, if you're trying to, like, if you're just trying to adjust it, these spokes just drop out. Um, I think I've got them in the right place. It's a little hard to tell. You meant to do, this is my leading spoke here from the other side and if the flanges were the same size I meant to run it to the hole next to it and run it to the hole in the flange which is just behind that um, and it's a little hard to tell when you've got two different size flanges so I think that's in the right hole if not it has to drop down to this one but mm. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see, but I'm going to get to building this and uh, hopefully I'll have a straight front wheel now one that doesn't um, constantly want to sit over to one side because that was just... there was no adjusting that at all Hey, whoop, whoop, is that in focus? I don't know So we've got one wheel roughly built I hate these wheels, they're a pain in the ass. Um, but at least it actually spins in the centre now. Uh, it's not perfectly straight. I think the rim is a little twisted from its adventures before. So I've got a little bit of fine tuning to do. But it's a hell of a lot better than it was before. Um, on this side, I zoom in, there you go, you can see I've got a load of blue tack holding the spokes in and that's because they've got the slots on that side as I explained and um, they're a pain, they're an absolute pain so whenever you try to put all, lace all the spokes in they tend to drop out so the blue tack just holds it in place briefly while you get this side all laced up um, and it saves them dropping out these holes here so when you peel it off you can see the little slots that they've got in them. Um, it's just a little little thing that I used. And what you also may have noticed is yes, the mud guard. Um, it has got mud guards and now it will have once I put the second one on. The front one's on at the moment because I've been working on that and I have had to do a little tiny repair to this, which you can see just there. Um, that is actually a piece of chain, just riveted together, because it had a little split in there. So it just had a little split, a little bit of chain link riveted on. So that should strengthen it, um, and it looks pretty good. I used some, um, these mud guards are actually off, you know, that rally single speed, single speed that I just took together. I just cleaned those down to bare metal. Um, and they're going on, um, so it should look a bit cooler as well. Um, and if you, if you're going to say that there, please stay there. If I pan down, I've also got these Brooks mudguard flaps. Um, I've bolted those on. I've had these for years, I think. And I swear, I swear, I only paid five pounds for them. I've got a pair of them, so I put it on front and rear. Um, and they are ridiculous amounts now for just a little piece of leather like that. Um, I swear I only paid five pounds for them. I swear I did. But it should make a nice finished look. So what I need to do now is obviously put the tyre on the front again, get the all back up, fit the rear mud guard because that is not on at the moment, and then uh, we'll get to fitting the dynamo lights. Okay, freehand. Mud guards are on. Torvi is still trying to get in the garage, um, but I think I'm ready to put the dynamo lights on, and it looks pretty. It looks pretty awesome, actually. Yeah, the mud guards were a good call, um, but the other ones were 
too far gone. Torvi, can you stay at the garage, please? No. Okay. She just loves to get in the back of the garage. Come on. But yeah, if you look from the back, we've got the. Oh, she's chasing on the leaf now. We've got the Brooks flaps on. Are they going to focus? No. Oh, God damn, Ken. Okay, yeah, that, I think that's sort of focused. I can't really tell. It's got the Brooks flaps on. Um, it looks pretty good. So, next thing to do is uh, keep the little kitty out of the garage and put the dynamo lights on. Now I know this hub uh, needs a service but I want to see if it produces any power. Now let's see if it can do this. So I bought this new multimeter. Um, I don't know how awkward this is going to be to film. But I need, now I need to spin the wheel get the contact points on while spinning it. Actually, let me put my uh, handlebar holder in place. Okay, handlebar holder on. Spinning the wheel definitely needs a service because it doesn't last very long. So that needs to be done, it needs to be added to the to-do list. But I should generate some power if I can spin this and continue to spin it. Yeah, do generate power. It's not very cons oh, It's hard to hold it on. I am reading six volts slowly spinning, but because it's alternating, it's not like a live readout. Um, so it should be working. Should be. It should be twelve volts, I believe. Um, but I'm just using this meter it's kind of awkward so I'm just gonna put my lights on and then try and hook it up I'm not actually sure how to do it so front light front light what I've got here is this nicely yellowed um, I believe it's maybe Sturmy Archer where's the brand yeah Sturmy Archer light um, so that's just gonna sit on my lamp bracket but before I say that, underneath you can see it's got a switch. Hopefully. Yeah. Underneath it's got the switch. It's got four wires coming out of it. Normally they only have two um, for a, a wheel ran at a dynamo. Um, but this bike, this light, ran to a or doohickey, or what do you call it, a battery pack um, so that you could switch it over it would still produce a little bit of light uh, when you weren't pedalling because obviously dynamos don't generate any power when you're not pedalling um, so yeah I don't have that battery pack I found out that the wire that I typed in red, taped in red is potentially the live feed um, doing a continuity test because it's got four terminals inside obviously where it ends up so I think if I run power to this one and then check the others in one position in all positions sorry uh, I think it was this one and this one have a continuity in uh, one position one of these comes alive and under another position another one comes alive um, so there's different circuits that I could work with but I only need two of the wires actually done at the moment I haven't got a batch pack to put on so I'm going to try first by hooking up the front lights only and then we'll see if we can get the rear light working hopefully the ball works as well so I'm going to get this tightened up in place and see where we go I thought I'd just show you inside. That's what we've got. That's what I'm working with. So we've got uh, three terminals on the front, 
uh, three at the back there, one at the front. The one with the red logo tape goes to this one, uh, which I believe is live all the time. And I think that goes to this to power the light as a positive feed. This is the ground because it makes contact um, when all the lights closed up the ground is basically just a, an earth on there so that should if we can follow that cable around go back to the other terminal and the two that are remaining one either side are for the battery packs I believe hopefully so I'm going to just do a continuity check while I'm here okay let's try this again so I'm going to check the continuity um, I've got my little tester when it goes together you hear a beep I believe this cable is the live because that goes to the back of the uh, light bulb itself so I'm going to go through them at the moment the switch is in the right position right is that right no left it's on the non-drive side it's right as I'm looking at it so I've got continuity with this cable here don't have any continuity with the second cable I have continuity with this cable here so that either one of these cables here left left as you're looking on it or right goes to this right switch if I switch it in the middle let's check them again so I've still got continuity with this one I've got nothing with that one and I've got nothing with this one so this switch, this cable here is when the position is in the non-drive side position so if I switch it back I've got continuity again when I find the cable in the right position there we go switch it to the drive side and it should again have this one yep have this one now come on work for me work for me why is it not working now it was working before anyway it should be that one <laughs> it should be ay 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 but it's so temperamental but anyway I've definitely got power with this one all the time so I'm going to use these two cables here as my positive and negative. These two are going back underneath and they are going to, I don't know, if I get one of those battery packs it will go to that. Okay, so now I've got that sorted, I'm going to go for the easiest of the easy methods of doing this. <laughs> and that's with a crimp connector. You can get these from, you know, local DIY store anywhere. She's oh, getting on the roof. But then, go on the roof then and watch. Meow, meow. Meow, meow. There we go. <laughs> so I know this cable's good. Okay. I'm just going to feed this through into here and it should create the connection hopefully still I'm using no wrong one if this is going to be the live side of the light I want this connector on there the actual bullet connection there we go because then when it, the power comes from the hub just for that it's not going to really do much I just want to safety first. There we go, so that will clip on there. And then when I run the ca uh, cable from the hub, I'll use that connector to fit in. And the opposite, the other side. I know it doesn't look tidy, but it's an easy way to connect and disconnect stuff. Was it this one? Oh, Shazer.
Magazine. Crimp that up. Put some heat shrink as well on this. Is that in there? And let's just test the continuity again. Just to double check before we uh, wire it up to the hub. So I'm on continuity test. That works there. Show view in there. Show view there. And we've got a connection. Good. So it should be pretty simple again. Um, down this end, all I'm going to use is one of these spade connectors to go around. Yeah, that will go in. So that will clamp down on that. That go in. Yeah, that will fit in. Um, so I just need to strip this cable. I know crimping isn't the tidiest of ways uh, and I can obviously solder it there you go but it's just, uh, it's just easy to work with and it's not the most stylish of ways either I'm just using some 5 amp cable I'll go through, crimp it up, as you can see I probably know nothing about electronics, so apparently these hubs have uh, poles it's not just hooking it up to either any of them um, one will work, one way will work, one way won't work so I'm just gonna get them hooked up for now get both terminals hooked up and then we will have a play and see which way works and if it works okay <laughs> uh, ready to roll both cables connected down here I've got sort of positive which I think might be on the left, negative on the right. Um, I've also got to hope that the bulb works. It does. Guys, it works. Guys, it actually works. Oh my god, it works. Okay, so that works. Um, <laughs> I have my little watcher up there. Tovi! Okay, but yeah, this works. So let me just put you back down and I'll show you. Question is, is it gonna be dark enough to see this? Um, okay, you've seen it all connected. I know I've got to tidy up the cables. I know I will do that. I'm gonna try and turn the exposure right down. But if I spin the wheel, slowly you can see a little flicker um, how am I going to spin this fast without smacking the tripod I might need to move you back There is a connection there. It is flickering power a little bit. It doesn't seem to be very efficient though. So I think that's why the hub needs to be serviced. But the connections work. Um, obviously the faster you go, the brighter it's going to go. That ain't going to be generating. Yeah. 
the connection is not very good in the hub. Uh, hub definitely needs a service because it's it's flickering more than um it's flickering more than staying on constant. So it definitely works. Okay, well that works. Um, should I do a rear one as well? Okay, this might be easy, easier to see. This is the original bulb. I've taken this connection is terrible. I haven't got the right connector for this. Okay. Against the metal work. Spin. It barely does anything. Like, the filament in there barely lights up at all. I don't know if you can even see that. You might be able to. But, if I change the ball belt, for a different one, I have cleaned up all the connections on the old bulb. If I change the bulb out. And hold it. There's a lot better uh, filament lighting up there. But again, the hub is in need of a bit of a service. So I'm going to run with this bulb I'm going to try and hook it up somewhere Okay, I've just done a bit of an experiment and um, it worked So I flicked the switch to the drive side Just hooked up a cable I was going to run this all the way down to the thing so the cable was super long at the moment and then hooked it up to the pannier rack um, because that bracket won't connect properly to the seat stays and it works. Again, it's shit flicker, so I'm not going to be able to show it on camera. Uh, but it works. So with the switch in that right position, it actually sends power all the way through that cable to the rear. So I am going to endeavour to tidy that up. Uh, I'm going to tidy all the cables up now, get them looped up properly. And then I've got actually working dynamo lights now. Okay, there we go cleaned up. Uh, I've just put a bit of heat shrink around those tubes and just cable tied them. Uh, it makes it look a lot better. Did I say tubes? I meant wires. So it makes it look a lot better. Um, and then we're going all the way up to the top. And at the top I've run the rear light all the way down the top tube and looped it all around the rack so that's nice and neat all down there. Um, and there's still the bullet connectors um, I'm going to do something with all this mess here but it works I'm happy with that dynamo lights I've managed to get them up and running uh, they're a bit notchy at the moment so I'm going to have to service this hub in the next video but it does light up You can just about see that there. It's a bit light at the moment for it to really show. But yeah, it works. It wasn't too hard. Um, it seems to me that the positive is on the left and the negative is on the right on the dyno hub. Uh, just got to make sure all the connections for that rear light, especially, are clean. Um, so the earth has a good mounting point make sure the bulbs work because they're old bulbs um, but yeah it seems to have come together so that is that stage of this build done okay that's the next part of this bike done if it focuses there we go mudguards on dynamo lights on Flaps on the mudguards, bell on, you haven't seen that. 
Uh, but yeah, it's come together nicely. Next episode on this, I'm going to have to service that front hub. Um, see if it's generating power properly. I'll do a video as well, riding it with the lights so you can see how they're working. Um, LED bulbs, I'm not sure if the connection type is going to be appropriate for those. You could possibly use them, make it a bit brighter. Um, but what I also want to do with this is obviously do that rear rack, get that built. Um, I've got a little ammo crate that I think I'm going to use for that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's come together nicely. Like It's actually really comfy to ride. Um, the lights are a nice touch. Hopefully the box on the back when that comes together will be good as well. So it's all come together. So I hope you like this little update episode on this. Um, Peugeot is going to come in out soon. I'm just waiting for a couple of components for that. That is going to be a bit Marmite for some of you. I've got a nice mountain bike build coming up when that frame arrives. Um, and there's another path racer as well. Actually, it might be two path racers. We'll see. Um, so, yeah. Plenty to do. Plenty to do. Just need to find the time and get it all done. So I'm going to get to editing this now. Get it out tomorrow. And... Uh, I guess I'll see you in the next episode.